Well, let's begin uh, with your um, student work. Uh, we're going to just uh, um, read the um, intro and then talk about um, just talk about uh, John uh, eight one through eleven. Uh, so we're going to um, read this intro. I'm going to read it to you. We'll read John 8, 1 through 11. We'll answer one question. Um, and then you'll have uh, whatever time you have left after that um, to work on your homework to reach the rest of, uh, of those questions. Uh, the day of the feast, uh, the day after the feast, excuse me. If a child pretends to be a police officer and writes you a traffic ticket in a crayon, you might laugh and pay your fine or lead the kid on a chase around the playground. But if an adult impersonates an officer and tries to pull over a car in a, on a dark, empty road, you'd have a very different reaction. We've all pretended to be someone else, but play and deception are two different things. Hypocrisy is lying about who you are. We're all tempted to pose a little uh, extra smart, cool, or athletic, but there's great danger in pretending to be holier than the people around us. Religious hypocrites build themselves a prison of spiritual stagnation. They can't learn or grow because they have to, have to convince everyone that they've already reached perfection. They put on a convincing show while nurturing pride and selfishness on the inside. Hypocrites obsess about other people's expectations, often while ignoring God's. We see hypocrisy perhaps most clearly when we learn about a Christian leader who makes headlines with some secret sordid immorality. Too often, pastors lead a double life. They can preach godliness on Sunday while flagrantly uh, ignoring God the rest of the week. Many so-called Christian leaders build a, a kind of cult around their personality, so when their sins are exposed, they damage the faith and trust of their followers. Scripture gives us many examples of religious hypocrites, and some Christians point to the Pharisees as the clearest example of all. Jesus condemned many of these leaders for failing to practice what they preached. The Pharisees wrote many religious rules, attention, that all together placed a heavy burden on the Jewish believers. If the Pharisees uh, kept the rules themselves, they often did so only to be praised by others. Jesus called such leaders whitewashed tombs. The entire verse is whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. Uh, beautiful on the outside, but dead inside. But all of us can fall into this same kind of hypocrisy. Uh, we all care about what people think of us. So we often impersonate their picture of a godly person. Uh, but over time, we can easily build up two separate identities, the better behaved one in church or school, and the one who smirks and laughs with fellow hypocrites. Jesus often warned his followers against hypocrisy. He told us to avoid serving people just to make ourselves look good in front of others. The only reward that matter uh, the only rewards that matter come from God, and he blesses those who serve and seek him. Jesus also warned us against judging others for sins. Doing so will invite the same kind of judgment on you. Uh, to Jesus, hypocrites are people who honor God with their lips but ignore God's commands in favor of human rules. Jesus calls us to be followers, not phonies. As the prophet Samuel learned, God looks about, uh, beyond our outward appearance and into our heart. There's no pretending with him. So instead of performing for others, we should follow a God, uh, follow on, focus on God, uh, his truth, and in his word, and discipline ourselves to follow him. If God loves us and approves our service, no other opinion matters. So um, let's read... Uh, the first, uh, okay, I'm going to pause. So as I mentioned uh, before, and I'll mention again, that, that these 11 verses weren't original to John. 
Um, we'll talk more about that. But uh, the earliest manuscripts do not contain uh, this story. So it was it was put into John early, but it wasn't original uh, to John. So uh, let's read uh, these 11 verses. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Uh, so what do you say? This, is, this they said to test him, to test Jesus, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. Uh, and Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. So that is the, um, that is the story. Uh, and let's uh, talk about this first question on, um, on page 146. So what would you have thought about Jesus if you were the adulterous woman uh, before him? Yes, Brennan. Why am I bringing Okay, why am I bringing Brock to him? I, she may or may not have known who he was. Uh, yes, so. Why is Okay, yeah, at the end, you would have been shocked, right? You're expecting to be stoned because that is the law. That was the law. Uh, and uh, if they followed the law, then she would be um, executed. What else? Yes. Was she... Have been ashamed. Never felt shame. I have a lot as much as that. Okay, too. Is it about shame or is it something else? Okay. Um, shame is a tough thing, right? And, and in our culture now, this whole thing of shaming people is is really uh, popular, right? And it and it's and it's bad to shame people. And I would say that. In a lot of cases, it is because in a lot of cases, it's just denigrating other people, it's just putting other people down. But if we've done something shameful, then we ought to feel shame. Now, there's forgiveness, but I'm sure she was here. Here she is. She's thrown down in front of Jesus. Maybe clothed, maybe not. Um, and there's a big crowd there. And she's guilty. There's, there's no doubt she's guilty of what she's been convicted of. Would you want all of your sins aired out? In of course not. I wouldn't either. Uh, and, and so try to, try to, to understand or try to feel that of what that would have been like. And, and then what she was expecting. You think she was expecting to die? That's exactly what she was expecting. Um, so yeah, all of that. I think it's I think it's good of us to good for us to kind of feel those feelings and understand what's going on here. And I think it's going to make the rest of the story as we walk through it um, more meaningful to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the book lecture. Um, I may or may not get done with it, but uh, just um, through this story, 
the lecture goes on in John 8, and we'll, we'll catch up with that. But then after we do this, tomorrow or the next day, uh, we will, uh, I'll do that in search of Jesus uh, lecture. You've already done the questions, and I'll do that in search of Jesus. So we're just going to move uh, right on ahead uh, and begin talking about, um, about this story a little bit from the curriculum's uh, vantage point. And we just we just read the eleven verses, so uh, we won't we won't read them again. Now it does start um, with uh, this in verse two. Um, early in the morning, he came again to the temple. Now, what is the title of this chapter? The day after the feast. It may be. it may mean early on. In the next more on the next morning, he came to the temple again. But Jesus, when he was in Jerusalem, went to the temple many times, right? And and especially because we don't know when this happened, because this wasn't originally in John. So especially because of that, my guess is this wasn't the next morning. It was some morning when he had been in Jerusalem, but it wasn't the day after. Uh, what is in John, the latter part of John's life. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, so, um, in these first 11 verses of chapter 8, we see the wisdom of Christ, uh, that he is, uh, that he is wise. Um, so um, the Pharisees, as you remember, um, are out to get Jesus. They're trying to arrest him. They're trying to find a charge against him uh, so that they can uh, get rid of him. Um, and Jesus knew of that, right? He was aware of that, uh, that they were wanting to kill him. Um, he told his disciples as well. Um, so why did he go back to Jerusalem? Why did he go to the temple? The, the easiest place for them to arrest him is in the temple because the temple police are right there. Why would he do that? Jesus said, I've got to be about my father's business. Uh, Jesus wasn't concerned about when they'd arrest him. He knew when they would arrest him. Jesus wasn't, a, wasn't concerned about being killed. He knew he was going to be killed. He was supposed to be killed. He was fine with that. Fine with that. <laughs> but he understood that. Uh, he had a job to do. And when you have a job to do, you go do the job. Uh, and so he's, uh, he has a job to do, and he's determined to do his father's will until that job is complete uh, on the cross. Um, so he, he came to earth literally to die and to rise again uh, for us. Um, but the Pharisees had a plan, and the Pharisees believed that, um, that they could accuse him of something um, that would cause him uh, that would trap him. Uh, so they're trying to, to build this trap for Jesus so that they can uh, arrest him on some... So they test him, and, and, and the, the narrative tells us as much, right? The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placing her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. 
Now the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. So they're testing him. They presented him with a problem. Um, and this woman that was caught in the very act of adultery, um, and uh, he had two choices, right? They said, so what do you say? She should be stoned. So he has two choices. Yes, she should be stoned, or no, she shouldn't be stoned. Can you see, do you understand this, this idiom of he's on the horns of a dilemma? What's a dilemma? A conundrum might be another word, too. A dilemma is that you have die two things that are opposed to one another, and what do you choose? How do you figure it out? So he's on the horns of a dilemma here. That uh, that either way he answers, donor don't stoner, there's a problem. We'll talk more about that. Uh, but the short answer is, if he says uh, don't stoner, well you're a lawbreaker. The law says we're supposed to do this. See, he doesn't follow the law. He's breaking the law by letting her go. If he says, uh, stone her, he's, he's following the law for sure. But he's not following the love of God and the, the law of love. Um, and he knows, he knows things that, that the Pharisees don't know he knows about their behavior. And that's going to come into play. Uh, as we go through this. So they have him, they think they have him um, caught. Um, they, they thought that, that they had finally found the dilemma that would trip him up, but, but they didn't. Um, she was just a pawn, which to me is one of the truly awful things about this story, is they use this woman as a pawn in their scheme to get Jesus, and she's just collateral damage that they don't care about. So let's talk then a little bit about his answer to that. He shows divine wisdom um, in this answer to the Pharisees. Um, as far as we know, um, until Jesus addresses her, the woman says nothing. But Jesus doesn't say anything at first either, right? What does he do? He doesn't answer them. Yeah, he, he squats down or kneels down and begins drawing in the dirt. What was he drawing? We don't know. We don't know. There's, there, I'll tell you some of the uh, guesses at it, but, but we don't know. Was he writing? Was he writing the names of men that also had committed adultery? Was he writing? We don't know what he was doing. Was he just averting his eyes from this woman? We don't know. But that's not the point. Um, the point is I, that he is taking his time. It's not what he doesn't know what he's going to say. This is a, a very highly charged situation. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of a situation, but what that situation needs is just, right? I think they're waiting for an answer. And I think he's wanting that uh, whole fervor uh, to uh, die down. Um, so we don't we don't know what he was writing. We don't know um, why he was writing, but um, but he was writing in the dirt. So the Pharisees, um, in in the long run, were trapped by Jesus' answer, uh, which was this. Um, and and as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, "Let him who is without sin." among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more, he bent down and wrote on the ground. Um, in Jewish law, the person who threw the first stone was the person who was hurt by the actions of the other. 
um, and they realized and they realized that they couldn't throw that first stone. Uh, and so they walk away. They walk away. It was a brilliant thing because there was nobody other than him qualified to throw that first stone because all of them had sin. Um, they knew the rules, um, but they didn't think the rules applied to them. Uh, and you ever known somebody like that? Maybe you are someone like that. I can be that way. Um, you know this idea of rule followers and rule breakers? The rule followers, usually the firstborn, especially if she's a girl, does everything right, like my older sister. It's perfect. It's really tough. I was second. Really tough act to follow because seriously, literally, she was perfect. Okay, she wasn't perfect, but she was really nice. Great A's, never did anything wrong, didn't rebel against my parents, make their bed for heaven's sake without even being asked. She just wanted to make their bed. Like, how do you follow that? Not well. I didn't follow it well. I tell people that um, my older sister was the child that made my parents think they were really good parents, and I was the child that disabused them. Uh, they, weren't, weren't, <laughs> they weren't as good as they thought they were. Um, but I think there's a third category. And that's rule keepers. Rule keepers are those that make sure everyone else is following the rules, but the rules don't apply to them. Uh, I got that same reaction from first hour. Like, yeah. Um, so that, that's what the Pharisees are. They're, they're not, they're rule keepers. Yeah, y'all got to follow the rules, but I can do whatever I want because I'm, I'm important. I'm, I'm a Pharisee. Um, and that's going to be their undoing uh, in the end. Um, and then it's talk, it talks about um, how he shows respect uh, to the law. Because he doesn't say, they say, should he, should he be stoned or not? Does he say yes or no? No. He quotes the law. Let him who is without sin be the first to throw the stone. The person who was uh, who was uh, sinned against was supposed to throw the first stone, and they knew they didn't weren't qualified. No one there was qualified to throw that first stone. I think it's possible that what he meant by that is, let anyone who is without sin in this situation cast them. Now, we can't know that for sure, but I think it's at least a possible um, interpretation of, of the situation. So he shows respect for the law. He doesn't say, don't stone her and break the law. He shows respect for the law. That makes it even more difficult uh, for them to bring a charge against you. And then it shows the hypocrisy of the leaders. Let's stone this woman for, for her sin. But they are sinners as well. Um, deserving of, of uh, uh, condemnation. And then let's talk about uh, the shame. And, it, and it's shame of the woman uh, that we've already talked about. Uh, but when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. And I think the shame, I think hopefully the leaders that tried to set him up uh, felt shame too, but I'm not sure they did. They should have. Um, it, by the way, there's this whole thing about shaming culture and don't be ashamed and all that stuff. I don't think people should shame people, but here's the thing. Shame is a legitimate emotion. If you've, if you've done something shameful, I believe you should feel shame. Now, other people shouldn't shame you, but I think we should feel shame when we do something shameful. Um, and uh, well, there's forgiveness for that, right? Uh, and, uh, and God will forgive, and if the person you've hurt is a believer, hopefully they'll uh, forgive as well. Um, but uh, 
but she was she felt ashamed. And so it says, but when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman. I think as they dropped their rocks and walked away, hopefully they felt a little bit of shame. Um, but why, why the older ones? It had to have left an impression on John because he didn't say anything. Oh, no idea? You're looking like you had, had an answer there. Why are the older ones first? Think about old people. You know, like the 30 year old. Yeah. Their plan already failed, so they're like, why are we so they left? Okay, so they knew their plan had failed, so they left, yeah. They can be, not always, but yeah, they've seen more of life uh, and maybe were more easily convicted, yeah. And, they, and hopefully so. That's not always true, but generally true. I know, I think you're generally right. I mean, ho hopefully that's true. Um, but yeah, they knew these were experts in the law, and they they knew what they had done, uh, and so I think they they got Jesus got to them, and um, they realized what they had done was wrong, uh, and so they left. Now maybe they left just because they were angry. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. Um, but um, uh, um, and then. It, what I want to do when we do um, the in search lecture is kind of concentrate on that uh, that conversation with the woman. That's it for today. Um, we'll do the in search tomorrow.